WOKB, Winter Garden, Orlando. Welcome to another edition of Real Family Talk. Hello, hello, host, hello, Real. hello. Welcome to Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday evening out there. We have a, an exciting show uh, lined up for you tonight. We've got, uh, got a guest in the building. We'll, we'll introduce him in a moment. And, of course, i got the crew with me. Uh, Jeremy's in the building. How you doing, Jeremy? Hello, hello. I'm good. How you doing? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. Mr. King is in the building. Mr. Michael King, how you doing, sir? My brother, my brother. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. That is his new thing. He did tell us that last week. <laughs> yes, he did. My brother, my brother. And uh, Jamba's in the building. How you doing, Jamba? Hey, I'm feeling amazing. How about yourself? Doing, doing well. Doing well, doing well. No complaints, man. It's been a, been a good week so far. Good week so far. And like I said, we have a guest in the house. Uh, his name is Mr. Frank Torres. He's a politi local political commentator. How you doing, Frank? Uh, great. Great to be here with uh, you people this evening and uh, ready to talk about uh, whatever you guys want to talk about. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're going to get to Frank in a moment. So Frank is coming. Um, I've been, I was thinking about what I was going to do with the show tonight, and, uh, and I was thinking about the month as well. And I, I came up in my mind, I, you know, we're leading up to November 4th, which is when the election is going to happen for the governor, as well as a lot of different local races. And, you know, one of the things that we advocate here, if you listen to the show, is voting um, and trying to educate people as much as possible about voting and why we need to vote and the importance of voting. And so in thinking about that, that's one of the reasons why I brought Frank here. Frank's going to join me. Uh, he's graciously <laughs> said he'd join me um, every week for a few minutes to talk about some of the uh, races that are going on s locally as well as uh, for the state. So that's why Frank's in the building. So we're going to do this every Wednesday night um, when we open up the show, talk about a different race, um, just educating people because I can't tell you people how important it is for us to go out and vote on November 4th, whatever, you know, I'm not here to advocate for any particular candidate, any particular party. I'm advocating for voting, you know, show up to the polls and represent whatever it is that you want to represent. Um, if it's to show up and vote no or <laughs> whatever you want to say, I just want you to show up and vote. Pick somebody, hopefully you'll pick a candidate and uh, vote for that candidate and support that candidate, whatever your decision. So, uh, like I said, we're going to be doing this every Wednesday leading up to November 4, educating you on what the different candidates out there are thinking so that you can be uh, informed. And then, of course, we encourage you to go on, go on your own and do some research, of course. Uh, that's, that's even more important than listening to us. Definitely go do your own research, search out the candidates, see what they're about, uh, see how you feel about whatever movement they're trying to create uh, so that you can make an informed vote for whatever candidate you choose to vote for. November 4th, people, it's coming. It's right around the corner. Uh, so please, please, please go vote. Uh, before we get to Frank, there's a lot of stuff happening today. Uh, we found out today the Secret Service director has resigned today. So that happened today um, amid the scandal that happened where a, a man jumped the White House fence, ran through an open door, and from that side, which was on the north side of the White House, and he ran all the way to the east side of the White House, uh, to the east room uh, of the White House before he was apprehended and arrested. So amid that particular scandal, she decided to resign. I'm glad she did because, you know, listening to some of these leaks, uh, the, now that they're leaking out all the information related to different lapses of uh, security that have happened under the Secret Service, under her Secret Service watch, you know, I'm glad she resigned. Uh, me and um, the president may not agree on everything, but the last thing I want is to see this brother dead. So <laughs> they need to get somebody in there that's going to keep security tight. So, you know, people aren't randomly jumping fences, running through open doors of the White House <laughs> and going from the north side of the White House all the way to the east side of the White House. Um, they, they, what was interesting, to get to the east side, they talked about how you actually pass the staircase, which leads up to the residents of the family so the family wasn't there at the time when he when he ran into the house when he ran into the white house but he ran right past the staircase that typically leads to the residents of the family so wow that's that's all i know to but say see, I mean, that, that's probably why they were a little lax because they knew they knew he wasn't there 
That is no reason to be. I did, I, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying this. Is re, I'm just saying that's probably why he was even able to get that close because they knew he knew the president of the family wasn't there. So that's why they were like, okay, well, you know, this is a, you know, you know that day when your supervisor don't come to work. Well, they had the team. Everybody, B. everybody been there. Team B was there. Yeah, everybody been there that day your supervisor come to work, so you don't dot all your eyes. Is that, is that what it was, brother? <laughs> hey, <laughs> we, see, we, we, you know, I mean, we un- I understand it is the Secret Service. Mm-hmm. We understand they have one of the most important jobs in the world, but at the end of the day, they still people. Everybody has their bad day at work. That's one place, though, you don't have a... <laughs> I, I'm not saying they got room for error. I'm just saying. <laughs> I didn't say they had that's room the for place, error. Though, I'm bro. just saying. Everybody has a bad day at work. That's we'll all I'm saying. Uh, so that happened. Uh, we, got a, we got a ruling today in the Michael Dunn case. Uh, that was the case where the, uh, there was a white gentleman who shot into the uh, car um, at a gro- uh, convenience store of young black males and ended up killing a young black male um, in the process. And so he, he got... There was a hung jury on the first time that they tried him on first degree murder. Today, though, they got um, a group of 12 people to actually convict him of first degree murder. So his his sentencing will be coming soon on that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is probably not the most popular opinions, but um, I, I'm not cool with the first degree murder. <laughs> I, I think he should be, I think he definitely should be in jail, but the first degree murder thing I thought was a bit much. That's just my opinion. I'm gonna just throw that out there. I, I know y'all probably disagree with me, but I don't disagree. That's probably why you had the hung jury in the first one. Yeah, because you're going for first instead of second. Exactly. But come on, know. let's charge them with stuff we can convict people of. I think they, people then you just, don't have these problems. I think people are just happy that something happened. Yeah. Because a lot has not been happening in a lot of cases where people are wrongfully murdered. Is that what it is, Jamba? So I think we're just kind of happy that oh, finally somebody finally got, somebody got convicted of something. Hmm. All right, mm. that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. You got something to say, Frank? Oh, well, you know, I mean, these are the decisions that the, the state attorney makes, and and a lot of people thought that if uh, if they would have charged Casey Anthony with a lesser, lesser charge, she might not be out on the street right now. So, I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of consideration that has to go into how these these people are being charged and and whether they can be convicted uh, and, and, and what the circumstances are involved. So, I mean, there's definitely valid points with you know a, a, a lot of the uh, parts of the discussion. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we'll see. Like I said, it happened. I know a lot of people are looking on Twitter today. I mean, uh, Facebook and Twitter today. A lot of people excited that he got uh, first degree. They felt like Florida finally got something right. It's kind of the the sentiment that you read when you go on social media. So uh, I guess yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take. I'll take that. But uh, yeah, that, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that happened, and then of course we now have our first. Ebola case uh, in the in the United States uh, down there in uh, Dallas, Texas. So that'll be interesting too to keep watch on on how Ebola in Dallas moves. Uh, apparently, though, what I found was interesting. Dude came back from Liberia. First thing I thought in my mind, why wouldn't that dude quarantine? Like, as soon as he got off the plane from exactly. Liberia, I've been like, uh, I need Should've, you to step over here. They should have duct taped him as soon as he got <laughs> off the plane. I need to step over here. We're just, just gonna rap, watch you for a few days. Saran rap. What was crazy is that uh, I think what was that? What was the movie about the the zombies and everything that was taking place in Atlanta, and then they took the the first Ebola case to the the place in Atlanta. I think that was crazy. A lot of people on the social media was talking about that. That's that's kind of interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. Walking Dead. I believe Walking Dead. Yeah. There you go. It took the whole place, thing takes place in Atlanta. In Atlanta, and the first case of the Ebola, they took the body to the place in Atlanta. Interesting. Coincidence? Mm. My not. brother, mm. my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of interesting news, man. But uh, Frank came to talk to us about the uh, Florida governor's race. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, talk with Frank about that. Of course, if you're following this, hopefully you are. You realize that uh, for the Republican Party, Rick Scott is running. Um, and then for the Democratic Party, Charlie Crist is running. And there's actually an independent candidate out there, too, um, I know it's Adrian Wiley, I believe. Is the Adrian Wiley running uh, under the Libertarian, which is you know it's a third candidate aside from the two normal parties. So there are a third. There is a third option out there for voters that aren't happy with each either particular party right now. Exactly. So Frank, k- kick us off. Frank, uh, tell us about tell us about the candidates. Uh, you know, right now, first off, this race, uh, the race is a toss up, which is a, makes it especially a good thing that you're talking about tonight because uh, every vote is going to count this year. Uh, if you look at the candidates, it's going to fall. You know, there isn't a lot of mix-ups here, uh, a lot of middle ground. 
If you're a Democrat, you're probably going to, you know, r relate more to Charlie Crist, even though, you know, a couple of years ago he was a Republican and, and uh, has uh, changed his mind on a lot of the issues going today. And, and if you're a Republican or a conservative, you're probably going to stick with, with Rick Scott. You know, um, they both got, you know, they don't really swing to the middle this much. Uh, the race is a toss up. Two very different guys. You know, Charlie's a warm guy. He can walk inside of a room, uh, meet 10 strangers, and walk out there with 10 votes. He's, he might be the best, you know, retail handshake politician in the state right now, as, as smooth as they come. Rick Scott, the governor, uh, he, he's a little colder, you know. Um, he, he's not the most animated guy. He, he's tough to get out there and, and, and find a very likable aspect of him, which is why uh, he leans a lot about on, on his TV commercials and his radio commercials so they can present a picture of him that might not be very visible uh, in the public eye, and that costs a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but like I said, you know, they, they both got their, their strong points and, and, and their weaknesses, and I think voters will, along with their traditional beliefs of, of how they believe the government should run and, and, and their views on different uh, issues, along with also what's in front of them right now, how they believe is doing, will help them make a decision in the governor's race. But every vote's going to count, and it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be very close going down to the wire. What, what, what are some of the differences between the policies that the candidates are running on? Uh, well, you know, you got uh, Rick Scott who's going to, you know, uh, let the business sector, uh, he's not going to regulate on them very much. He's going to give them a lot of leeway to run the businesses as they see fit. Um, he's going to be more, uh, more inclined to go out there to other country or not to go out of the country, to other parts of the, the country to, to try to get jobs and uh, um, and and Charlie will do a lot of that as well. Uh, but I think you're going to see a, a lot as, as far as the working with the legislature um, and, and the kind of mindset they have as far as, as taxes and the way the money should be spent. Um, that's where I think you'll see a lot of people go on a different way. I think you'll see. Uh, the governor continue what he's been doing with, with, with his spending. You'll recall when he came into office, he did a lot of spending cuts um, from education, a lot of things along those lines. He's put up some of that money back um, to get us to where we are today. I think Charlie will, will, will sort of mix it up a little bit um, and try to spread it out to the different departments and different areas of the community. Um, but I think it's really going to come down to, you know, just the different uh, views and different issues of, of each candidate to see a how they um, how they, they they govern in office. Of course, they've both been in office before, so we both have a, a taste of, uh, what, they uh, of what they can do. Uh, Charlie, even though he was a Republican, was a very uh, a very middle leaning um, Republican. He, he sided with uh, the Democrats uh, in Tallahassee on, on a few different occasions. Uh, and then you got Rick Scott, who uh, who who isn't so much uh, who is a very bipartisan. Doesn't doesn't work to the middle very often. Right but still manages to get things done with the Republican majority in the legislature. Correct. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, give me, for, for those that, you know, one of the things you hear about Rick Scott is, oh, Rick Scott didn't do anything for anybody. Is there is there anything you can highlight that Rick Scott has done that has actually helped people, let's say middle class even? Anything you can think of? You know, that's uh, that's an argument that, that's being made by the Charlie Chris campaign. Does Rick Scott, uh, is Rick Scott in touch with the middle class? Now, you know, has he done some things for the for the middle class? You can make the argument he has because of, you know the the the, the unemployment uh, numbers have dropped significantly since he's taken office. There are a lot more people working now than they were a couple of years back. Um, but as far you can also make the same discussion against him over what the quality of life is from different tiers of life. You know, it, is he favoring the rich? Are the rich better off than they were? For are, is the rich getting richer and is the poor getting poor? Um, so there's a lot of the, the numbers have gone down, but depending how, you know, uh, 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 what's in front of you, you know, how, how each person is doing individually and in, uh, in, in their own households, it's going to depend how you vote and whether a change is necessary and or whether we should stick with the guy we got now. But I think the real the real difference here is uh, definitely the personalities and the way both of these men uh, act in the public eye. So. Got you, got you. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot, my biggest criticism of Charlie Chris. You know the thing I I kind of just kind of irks me about him a little bit is just his 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 way that he sort of leans to whatever side is popular, and, and so you know I, I've made several several comments on on the show about how you know take a poll see what the people think and uh, wait a few minutes and Rick I mean not Rick Scott and Charlie Chris will agree with that whatever that says now whether that's 
that's part of his policy or not, he's I feel like he's just going to go with the popular opinion. Whereas when you look at Rick Scott, whether you agree with him or not, I think he's <laughs> he's consistent in in his you know Republican conservative whatever whatever mantra you want to call it. Um, he's at least consistent in that in that vein. There was there was a a guy at Charlie Chris ran against the Senate in 2010. You recall he was an independent for a short time. Democrat his Democratic opponent in the Senate was Kendrick Meek. He said that if Charlie Chris took a poll. And the poll said it would be popular for him to hug a palm tree for 45 minutes. He would go out there and do it immediately. Um, he <laughs> does. Agree. He does love his. He does love his polls, but the polls aren't going to help him here because the race is essentially a tie up. A tie up. Nobody has more than a couple of point lead in in either direction with all of these polls that you see uh, being pushed on television and in the radio. There isn't a clear front runner here. It's going to be a toss up. So. So Charlie's going to have to look inside of himself and, and make a decision, and not make a decision, but he's going to have to, you know, d- demonstrate his will to the people that, you know, that this is what he, he thinks sincerely and, um, and, and and see if he can win their vote. He's been very upfront, you know, since he started running for office about about his past as a Republican and and about, you know, the, 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 the decisions he made. Um while he was in office, he's he's been telling the voters he was you know basically a a Democrat in a, in a Republican's body and and and, there, and there's a lot of there's something that, there's stuff there to support that as well, but uh, Charlie Chris has two opponents in this race. One is Rick Scott, and the other one is is the old Charlie Crist, and he's going to have to uh, to work hard to to make sure that the voters um go for the product they have now. Go for the new go for Charlie, Charlie Crist, new and exactly. improved, right? Democratic Charlie Crist, because he's no longer a Republican <laughs> independent. He's now a Democrat. Yeah, he's Democrat. Okay. Hey, okay. It's confusing. Don't think decision is made. It, it is slightly <laughs> confusing what he is. And, and he's had, and, yeah, and, and he's had these, these big, he's had as big Democrat names. He's had Bill down here campaigning for him, Bill Clinton, and he's going to have Hillary down here next week campaigning for him. The so, president campaigned for him too, didn't he? The, the president, uh, you know, the, the campaign, I don't know if they're saving that for the middle of October, but they're going to have to wait to see um, uh, if they can get him down there. If the president wants to come, he's coming. So, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see what, what his campaign decides. They might be saving him for last for all we know. Hmm. But, well, uh, now, another hot thing that will be on the, the ballot is obviously the medical marijuana Medical what, marijuana. What, what do the two candidates stand on that? Uh, I, I tell you what, um, they're both really mum on it. They're 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 staying. You know, um, they're Rick Scott's against it. You know, his cabinet's against it. But you won't hear him say that unless he's asked directly. And even if you ask him directly, he might not tell you straightforward. Um, <laughs> Charlie's mildly uh, in favor of it, but uh, it's still a, a subject. You know, it polls well. Um, it's a subject that they're both being advised to stay away from uh, because it's miracle marijuana and because it can be controversial. You know, I, uh, I think they're going to yeah, just try to say as little about it as possible and let the voters decide. And, and, that's a, and that's a whole different subject altogether. Medical marijuana, that race is really cranking up. How so. do you feel about it? Do you feel it should be passed or do you feel like it's not that time yet? You know, I think, I think it's coming. Medical marijuana no is what. coming. It's, it's coming. I think... Um, Charlotte's Web, the nine euphoric version, has already passed, and I've I've said before, recreational marijuana is going to be here in about six to eight years, and it's going to be in a lot of other states because uh, it's good for the economy, and they're being able to regulate it uh, in a fashion that um, raises that, taxes. That <laughs> raises, they're able to be, you can make money off of it. So exactly. if you can make money off of it, even the business-minded Republicans are, are going to get to give it a good luck. So. Um, you know, the, the, it's all about, you know, regulating it in a fashion that doesn't hurt anybody and making sure that it is not readily available. One of the counter talking points of the opposition to the amendment. Do you think Florida's ready for it? Yeah, Florida's ready for it. You think yeah, so? Yeah, I think so. I think we're ready for it. And, and like I said, you know, we're, there's already the 94 version, the Charlotte's Web version. And, um, and uh, you know, it, it, it's it, the municipalities. Orange County's already getting ready for it. Winter Park. Is already getting ready for it. Winter Park's trying to keep it away from Park Avenue as far as possible away from Park <laughs> Avenue. With a lot of people that retire and come to Florida, I think that's why, because a lot of uh, people over 50 
uh, are the ones that would supposedly be using this uh, for their for their medical reasons. And a lot of people retire and come to Florida. And so that's where the money would be. And down the street, down I-4, you got the villages, one of right. the biggest and, and, retirement communities yeah. in the country. Right. And that's, we, that's what I was saying last. We know yeah. they like to have a good time down there. <laughs> they like to have a good time down there. And I, I don't know. You see, <laughs> as 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 my, you see this amendment pass. They might be having a really good time down there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and have less arthritis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's an issue a lot of people feel strongly about, but I, I think it's coming regardless. And a lot of the, the municipalities and cities are already getting ready for it. So. Now, now be, uh, before we before we end this, uh-huh. Adrian Wiley, can you, can you tell me anything about him? Um, he, right now, as far as the, the aspect of the race goes, he's a potential spoiler. He's been pulling anywhere from 7 to 11 percent. As long as, um, uh, uh, depending who you ask, you ask him, he'll tell you 11. You ask you know one of the other candidates, he'll tell you 7. He could be a particular spoiler right now. Um, what about policy? Is is he in between the two gentlemen, or is he more on the on the Democratic side, Republican well, side? He, or is he, he's, he, he he's straight up libertarian, which means he's gonna you know he's gonna push Republican views on, on business and, and fiscal matters, and he's gonna lean to the left, be more Democratic on the social matters. Your, your medical marijuana amendments, uh, same sex marriage, uh, pro choice or pro life. You know he's gonna he's he. He represents a strand of the future, the potential future of both parties, but it doesn't, based on his polling numbers, it doesn't appear that, you know, he might have caught fire yet. So his role in this race will be as a spoiler. And if you don't like any candidates, you might want to take a good look at him because um, um, I think his trend and his views will continue to grow, but it just hasn't matured yet. Gotcha. All right. All right. Well, there uh, it is. There it is, yeah. yeah we, I mean, thank you, Frank. Uh, Frank, go ahead and, uh, and plug your stuff, man. Uh, you know, Frank Torres, you know, I'm the publisher of OrlandoPolitics.com or the Orlando Political Observer. The website's Orlando-Politics.com. I've uh, been doing analysis on television for a couple of years. Uh, one of your other guests, Jason Henry, uh, the guy who, you know, who's normally in this seat, a good partner, a friend of mine on television, done plenty of analysis with him before. And uh, it's going to be a, a great election year. And I think uh, regardless of where you stand on the issues, you got to get out and vote because – that turnout was just awful in the primary. I mean, mm. it, terrible. It, it's just terrible, terrible. And, and that means not everybody's voice it means you have some. Might have some people getting in the office. Telling you, and please, you know, Paulus. You got to <laughs> show up November fourth. Got to get vote. out. You got to show up November fourth and vote. And, and and I think if if we can get them numbers up there, uh, get, get them up to a high, get them up as high as we can. I think it'll be a good thing. Yes, that or, or go to early voting. Remember, they go to early, early absentee early. early. Man, they're you making know, it so absentee easy. voting, early voting, November fourth, whatever, so. whatever works for you. They even open on Saturdays and Sundays. So and, and, mean, if, and if twenty twelve, gotta long, have some time exactly. on Saturday and Sunday at least. And if the long lines of twenty twelve turned you off, it's gonna, it's not going to be that way this year. It's going to be there is going to be you know it ain't going to be as intense. And you'll have right. plenty of time to get in there. And get not there. even go Saturday or Sunday to early voting. All right, right. It won't be a long line in. I make guarantee some, you that. Make some time. Make some time. Exactly. Drop the kids off at of grandma's house or something. No, take the kids with you. <laughs> over, over five so they can see you vote, too. <laughs> there you go, man. So Frank, they, they used to do it. Exactly. Frank, we want to thank you for uh, joining us, man. Like I said, Frank's going to stop in uh, for the next few Wednesdays and uh, break down some other of the races as well. So, Frank, you, Frank thank you, man. It's my appreciate pleasure it. to be here anytime. Ah, appreciate, appreciate it. You. Yeah, thank you. Ah, so, we're going to uh, we're gonna keep it moving, man, and, and get into our next topic. Um I've been listening on the radio, and, and they've been talking about an article that got released. Um, and this article was talking about women. Um, and what it says is it says that half of all women have a plan B in their relationship. That's what the article says. It says half of all women have a plan B in their relationship. And then what really struck me about the article is they say that even married women have a plan B to the marriage if the marriage don't work out. And I was just blown away. I'm like, really? Every half of all women have a plan B in their relationship, and even the married women, too? I was like, I couldn't believe that. So listening to other conversations, you know, different women calling in, 407-894-1680, 407-894-1680 is the number. Uh, I just had to ask. I said, I got to bring this to my audience. I, I, is this is this trend hold true? Because listening to some of the other shows, you got all kind of women. Yeah, I got to. I got a plan B. I mean, he's not, you know, we're just friends right now. And he's been my good friend for a long time. 
and you know he respects my relationship and da 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 da. I had one, there was one girl called in, and that was her story. Oh, he's just my friend right now, and he respects my relationship and da 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 da. But he told me if I uh, if my relationship doesn't work out, he'll he'll pay for me to move to Chicago. She's in Florida. He'll pay for me to move to Chicago, <laughs> and he'll take care of me and my kids, and I can be a stay at home mom. What? Wow, <laughs> that's the setup. <laughs> That is like the what? Setup. What is going on? Four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. That's the question. Is this is this article true? The study says fifty percent of all women married or you know just in in a relationship, a long term relationship, have a plan B, a man that they know if that relationship, that marriage doesn't work out, that he would gladly take become that new man even though he respects what they currently have, meaning he's not trying to get you away from your husband. He's not trying to get you away from your long-term partner, but he certainly has let it known at some point in the friendship that y'all share that if things don't work out, hit me up. <laughs> well, well, me personally, uh, as a relationship specialist on the show, <laughs> I, I completely agree with it. Uh, cause, but, and, and the reason I do agree with it, because today – Today's man is weak and they will put up with that and they will know that she's in a relationship. But, hey, just in case he slip, I'm right here. And, you know, it's not on the woman because if that's what he going to do, she feels more because uh, most women just want security. So she feels more secure. I'm sorry. She feels more secure knowing that it's another man that's willing to step in if the man that I'm dating or either married to slips up. So it's not really the woman's fault. I blame the man for being weak enough to actually do it. Um, is it true? I think it's very true. Everybody knows um a female or a guy that's in this situation. Um, I'm hoping that y'all do call in 407-894-1680. But, you know, what What do you feel, Jumper? Um, to begin with, I think it's kind of interesting that this is a big deal because I feel that men have been making this clear and out in the open to everybody that they do have a backup. Somebody on the sideline, if we've a side chick. Really? I, don't, I, don't like so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think. I have to disagree. If, it was, I if, it, if the story was based off of men, would that have been that But it, w- it would be secret. Most women let it be known, hey, he's just my friend. We just talk. He's just an associate. That's but in the back women of- are more sneaky Er. Oh, okay. I'll agree with that. Because it's true. I'll women agree are with sneaky in, their ca- in a lot of different cases. Men put more things on the front line as far as. I, because of that double standard that is there, they're able to put things more on the front line without them looking a certain way. Me being a woman saying that I have my main my main man, my husband, my boyfriend, whoever he is, he has the title of being belonging to me and me belonging to him. And having somebody else on the side, now all of a sudden, what are you going to call me? Exactly. Uh, the same thing that you called a man. You a dog. You were this. You were that. That's the same thing they called a man. And what happens when you call a man a dog? He barks. Um, ha, that's ha, not I mean, true. Ha, ha, I mean, smiles. He smiles. Ha ha ha. The I'm truth not is a the dog. truth. I mean, I mean, but, but as a female, you, we you, come up with a lot of different derogatory. Here's my. Terms. Here's my, this, here's what blew me away. The, if you're in a long term relationship, you know y'all. Y'all in a long-term relationship, but y'all, you know, still technically single, you know, because y'all not married, y'all not engaged, y'all just mm. in a long-term relationship, right? See, I, I can get that, right? Because at, at that point, as as I as I see it, you know, you, there really no whole lot of commitment there, you know. Mm. It's it's sort of uh, announced, and you guys feel that it's true, but at the end of the day, there's nothing uh, so, so solid, you know what I'm saying? There's no fiance at that point. There's no marriage and you know consecrated by god and all that kind of stuff so so anything can happen in that situation so i can understand why somebody might have a quote-unquote plan b in those circumstances but what got me about the article was the fact that they say even married women have plan b so because when you think about marriage marriage is okay it's me and you and this is forever for life this is for life so if you're a married woman and you have your life partner it surprises me that you, you know, there's a survey that would suggest ha- at least half of the people that are married have plan B's too. Uh, there was a, you know, listening to, again, some of the different callers that I heard, 407-894-1680 is the number 407-894-1680. Again, we're talking about an article that suggests that 50% of all women have a plan B in their relationship. And they included married women as a part of that. 
And so that's what we're discussing. But in one of the callers that, that I heard on another station, um, it was a married man um, that called in to talk about his wife. Um, this man said he had been married to his wife. Um, I can't remember the exact time, but I mean, it was a good. It was at least 10, 15 years that they've been married. So we're not talking about spring chickens here. <laughs> so uh, 10, 15 years they had been married. And he basically acknowledged that he knew his wife had a plan B. What he said was his wife had a friend that, you know, is still her friend. And they've been friends for at least certainly the life of their their marriage and possibly longer. And he kind of knew that if him and his wife ever didn't work out, it wouldn't even surprise him that she would go and be with this friend that she's had. Now, as he said, their marriage is fine and nothing's about to happen to their marriage. But he understood at least that, you know, there's this guy that, you know, he apparently knows the guy, too, clearly from, you know, from the conversation that he was having. He knows the guy as well. But he knew that most that, men do. Most <laughs> men know. That's, oh, that's he knew that she, he was right there waiting in the wings. Like, I, wow. See, I, women are not going to put up with that. Women are not. They're going to make you cut off your man, cut off your other friends, cut off your homeboys, too. Mm -hmm. I'm going through your phone. I'm checking out your text messages. Trust her. Most mm -hmm. men aren't going to do that. But women, they be like, hold on. That girl trying to get you on the low low. Women can pick up other women. Men, we're kind of more cool or suave. You know, we. We really just kind of be like, well, I think I need to step my game up, you know? All right. I see we got a caller. How you doing tonight, Delissa? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. What's your comment tonight? I disagree with women having a backup because if you're in a relationship, you should be secure with the person that you're with. But what if it's just a friend that you're real cool with and y'all hang out with? Then I think... It's, it still shouldn't be like that. Like, the person should know this is what it is. Right. So so there should be, if you're going to be committed to that person, then you should be committed to that person and, and all forsake all of the other, quote, unquote, plan Bs or anybody that, that might fancy themselves that way. Let me ask you this question, Delissa. Um, as a woman, um, I don't know, are you you're married in a relationship? In a relationship. You're in a relationship. So if there was a, if you had a guy friend that made it known that, um, you know, he, he would love to be your plan B, if you will. Is Would you cut him off or would you would you let him know that that's not going to happen but remain friends with him? I would let him know and remain friends. And that's why most women have that plan B. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Only because Thank you, they remain we friends. Appreciate it. There's, there's that thin line between innocence of where we were friends for so many years. I mean, he told me he's interested in me, but at the same time, I would never do anything like that. But then there's that one little voice in the back of the back of the back of your mind where you're like if something were to happen i already know i can run to so-and-so because he'll be there is that true delissa i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> uh i thank you thank you for calling delissa we appreciate you're it you guys have a good night all right you too 407-894-1680 is the number 407-894-1680 is the number but see that's that that's john but that's that's what i'm talking about how how are you going to be committed knowing in the back of your mind as you say that that if this don't work out, I got him. Like, what is that? Because um, it's always that I'm not. I can always. No, I don't want to say it. In it's sense, extra. Like I'm lying. It's but extra security. I always. Yeah, it's extra security because at the same time, I have that. I don't want to be with him. I'm happy in my relationship. I'm happy with the man. That this friend of mine, he's a good provider. He has enough years. Just in case. He'll be there for me. So so basically. That doesn't mean I'm banking on him. I'm hoping something bad were to happen to my relationship. But I just know he's there just in case. All right. Uh, we got Evangelina on the line. How you doing? I'm fine. What's I'm your good. comment tonight? I'd just like to say most men, single or married, um, they live with a backup. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about women, though. And I know, <laughs> so but it's saying. men you know. also as well. So the men have backups, too. So, so that's why y'all do it, because the men do it, so y'all do it, too? Mm -hmm. No, not really. Oh. Uh, most women um, that is married, they don't have a backup plan. You know, they love their husband and try to do the right thing, you know, raising their families. And, all, and on the other hand, he already got the backup, you know, that he's cheating with. Oh, I've seen it so many times, so you're even in my marriage. So you're saying uh, most men have a backup, and then sometimes they will even go out and cheat with that backup. Yeah, they act on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're saying, just asking the women don't do those types of things, right? Not very men. So you're, so you're disagreeing with what the article has said? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. All right. Well, we thank you for calling, Evangelina. We appreciate it. Her- and that plays Thank into my, that plays into my first comment. If it was a story based off of men, would we have been this surprised and this appalled that that many married men have a backup female? Yeah, see, here's that. Who's appalled? Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. Here's how I feel about that. As a married man, I say I don't I don't have a backup. Honestly, because if if my marriage doesn't work out, the last thing I'm thinking about is another relationship. <laughs> nah, so, I'm, nah, I, I don't nah, have I, no backup. Well, I, well I, I I disagree slightly. Meaning, not saying I'm not thinking about another relationship. Meaning, like n- I'm not necessarily thinking about another relationship. But if I want to get in another relationship, <laughs> there's a couple of things. I think. Yeah, cu- exactly, you have a couple different options. Hey, I'm not saying that you're it. looking at them as. Yeah, but there's a couple of people. It's like you know what. That man might be able to work something out. And you see, exactly. women are much different than men because women don't like to be alone. They rather have some type of comfort. And so they don't want to have those lonely days where I don't have nobody to talk to. Nobody wants to take me out. So just in case I have a friend and in her mind, he's just a friend in his mind. Oh, she just got out of a relationship. She vulnerable. <laughs> it's my time to slide <laughs> on in. You know, that's how well, men you said, are, you, said you know, like that. and that's how it is. You know, a man, he'd be like, you know, yeah, we cool. Yeah. Don't worry about it, girl. Cause I know that you're such a good woman that if your boyfriend ever slip up, I'm mm-hmm. a slide on in like a snake. Right and, right. and that's what men do. But at the same time, as the sister Jamba says, in the back of that woman's mind, she knows that also. So she's more wrong than him. Because as the young lady said, she would just be let him know and she'd just be his friend. But at the same time, if it was the opposite, the woman would make that man cut her off. She would be like, no, y'all can't be friends no more. Right. Get her number. Don't talk to her at work. Because most women have that, um, what they call a work boyfriend. Uh, well, you know, we, we, we <laughs> joke at work and we'll play at work. But at the work, you know, I'm going to my real man. But when we at work, oh, that's the one I joke with, eat with at lunch. He'll buy for my lunch. Sometimes I'll buy him some free napkins, you know, <laughs> and that's what they do. But, but, but most uh, women are most people. Most women. Because men, men once, you, once you let it be known that you're in a relationship, relationship most women back off they be like well you know you got a woman so i'm gonna just leave you alone i'm not gonna overstep my boundaries men aren't like that they're like oh you got a man and what your man gotta do with me we at work we just talking we just friends you know and that's why i say men these days have become weak but women Mm -hmm. put up with it and that's why the men continue to be weak if women stop putting up with it and take that little thought out the back of their mind then the men would change but the women don't want to they want that extra security and that's why i believe that the article is completely true 407-894-1680 is the number 407-894-1680 is the number so speaking of that so um, jama you're you're my lady tonight so (laughs) (laughs) so you're going to speak for the women uh until they call in themselves 407-894-1680 we'd love to hear from you uh give us a call tell us what you think 407-894-1680 so men have plan b's that's 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 kind of where we're we're going with this so if if you um assuming you were in a relationship uh jamba and you knew that your man was friends with his so-called plan B would that be would you make him cut him off cut her off I should say um I probably wouldn't give him like an ultimatum or anything like that but I would make it very awkward very difficult for that friendship to live on only because here's how I'm looking at it Black me women. personally period there's no such thing as a new girlfriend after we begin into a relationship unless you guys were friends beforehand before I came around there's no such thing as I just met this girl now we're friends uh-uh no, you don't need any more female friends. I'm now, all you now, now, why not? I know this is a whole other show, but let's just delve in this a little bit. <laughs> now, why not? Because I've heard a lot of women say that. Like, oh, well, if you were me before, you can't have no new female friends. Why not? What do you need another female friend for? What do it's you not about needing. Well, I mean, if you meet somebody and y'all cool, y'all become friends. What's wrong with that? Yeah, you I guys come friends whenever you meet wherever you met at before again. So you guys met at a happy hour. Unless you see her at that happy hour by chance. Not I'm texting, hey, I'm going to meet, I'm going to happy hour. Are you going to be there? No, none of that. Mm-mm. What, what do you need that for? Because we're friends. No. It's just like, you. Uh, I, I really feel that's a trust issue that most women have to deal with within themselves because it's a friendship. Just because we are friends doesn't mean we doing other stuff but hanging out. Mm. We got another caller. How you doing, Maya? What's your comment tonight? Hi. Hi um, I think that 
a reason why a man or a female has somebody on the side. It's not somebody personally he does. But I think it's like a bargaining chip. Like, if you ever mess up, you know, I have I have somebody that I can go to. So, so then, so you you basically acknowledge to your 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 partner that you do have this other person. Is that what you're saying, Maya? Right, because I feel like some men do take advantage of the fact. Well, I've been here so long, you can't, you know, you won't ever leave because you're so comfortable. Mm. So, do, are you in a relationship, Maya? I'm not. I'm single. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was going to ask, you know, do you have a backup friend or anything to that nature? But if you're single, I'm sure that you have a lot of just friends, correct? I don't actually, you know, I'm kind of, right, me personally, I'm focused on, I'm not focused on our relationship right now, but I have a lot of female friends who, who are like that. They have their main and then they have backup just in case, you know, that guy says something disrespectful or he just does something wrong. So they're just friends. So if you were in a relationship, would you make the guy that you were dating cut off friends that were a little too close for comfort in your opinion? I, I don't know if I would cut it off, but I would tell him to set boundaries, you know, like, hey, you know, I need you to respect my my chick or my girlfriend, you know. So let me ask you, say y'all are just watching television, just hanging out one day. And, you know, you know how people are. They text in their phone and they just text in and they text in and they they text often. And every time y'all chilling, watching Netflix, he's texting. Mm -hmm. Would that aggravate you? Would you want to know who he's texting? If it's the same friend, would that bother you? I mean, to a certain degree, because I feel like, you know, you work and I'm working on day. This is our time. You know what I'm saying? And if you're steady texting, then your mind is not on me. Got it. I mean, it'll, it'll bother me because, you know, we have, we even if we live together, you know, you've been working on day, I haven't seen you all day. This is, it would take away from our time. All right. I appreciate you for calling, Maya. Thank, Thank you. you. 407-894-1680 is number 407-894-1680. Yes, sir. Just the FYI to all the men out there. If you are at, at home or wherever, chilling with your significant other, wife, whatever, and you're getting text. It's Do not acknowledge problem. them. <laughs> See, that's not true. It's I, I, be a, a lot right. of women just, do it, though. Just don't it's acknowledge. I'm saying, talking about for the man. But, so women not, can do it, but men can't do it. That's what I'm saying. That's, yes, that's, that's exactly that's, how it goes. That is, not get they go that yet. double standard. <laughs> I don't believe in double standard. It's only <laughs> one double standard I believe game. in. It's only one, and I'm not going to comment on that. Please don't. We don't but do it's one, and it, and I feel that's horrible because it's a lot of women. They just chill, relax with their friend, and they text in other friends. You know. All right, we got another call. How you doing, Kanisha? Hi, how are you? Doing all right. What's your comment today? Um, I just want to say, for the record, I'm married, um, but I think having a backup plan is just a dangerous game to play. Because in my mind, there really shouldn't be a backup because you shouldn't ever need one. Um, I've been married for over three years, and in my mind, there is no, there's no other option. Like, whatever we're going through, we have to make it work. Divorce is just not an option. So having a backup plan, to me, just kind of negates that way of thinking. If you get married, it should be forever in your mind. You well, shouldn't need a backup plan. Let, let me ask you this, because I know a lot of uh, people like to play with words. So let's change that word from backup plan. Uh, because, of course, you're not going to have a backup plan. But we're going to say you have a friend that's just your homeboy that you text and you see often. Not dating, not a backup plan. He's just a friend that, you know, y'all just friends. See, now you're getting into the subject of should you have friends of the opposite sex. And um, I think that you can. I don't have a problem with that. My husband has tons of friends, what female and male, and I don't have a problem with it. But I'm talking about you, though. Do you? For me, for me, uh, not so much. I have a lot of guy friends, but I mean, we have a lot of mutual friends just because we went to school together. So a lot of our friends are mutual friends. But so I don't believe you should have a friend that you're so close to. You can consider them. Well, if this doesn't work out, uh, I still have so and so. Because in my mind, why are you even thinking like that? So, so you don't have any friends. You're human. Th- you don't have any friends that are males that aren't like a mutual friend with you and your husband. It's just kind of like, yeah, I, I met. I have him. a couple, but not in my mind that I can that I would ever even think to say, okay, you know what? If me and me and hubby don't work out then you know i always have so and so i don't know i just think that's a really dangerous game to play if you're even thinking that way then there's something more going on with you and that friend maybe you maybe not yet but you're walk you're going down that path mm-hmm. 
All you right. can have friends where you're emotionally tied to the point where they can be considered your backup. So all of your mu- all of your friends that are guys have met your husband personally. No, probably not all of them, but they all know of him. They all know about. They him. know, but they haven't sure. met him personally. What does it change if they met him or not? Because she's still on the she's place? she's still on the plan B thing, and once, like I say, once you change that from a plan B, it's still a friend, and that's what yeah, we're trying to say. All of my male friends haven't met my husband, but that that doesn't mean that they don't know he exists and he is very much in my life. Like they have no inkling of, oh well, you know, if that ever doesn't work out, or like there's no emotional ties there. Gotcha. Like, I have no emotional ties with another man. Like, I have friends. I have guy friends who I love as friends, but nothing where, like, I don't feel anything else. Nothing else. There's nothing else there. Gotcha. I appreciate it. That's good. That is a good way to be. I respect that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling in tonight. God appreciate it. it. Thanks, guys. You guys are great. <laughs> oh, appreciate uh, thank it. You. Thank you. But it's only Bye. been three years. 407 894 is the number. 407 Wait till they get to 10, and we'll see what she say then. How about you get to one, and let's see what you got to say then. My brother, <laughs> my, oh, bro- my brother. My oh, brother, my brother. My sorry. My sister, my sister. I guess she told me. I'm just saying. I told me. Some people can't pass one. That's not to say to take anything away from those who haven't made it to 20 mm-hmm. how what you think they was doing on their way to 20 trying to make it to three i trying completely to make it understand to five. but but my thing is this um you know you, you the, the plan b thing is what i was trying to say once you get away from that plan b and that mindset because most women don't have an idea that they're going to date or marry that man they feel like you know well it, and ideally, in a perfect world, as Brother Real would say, you know, y'all are supposed to be friends first. And then it's kind of like, well, we've been friends and we're both single and we're friends. So maybe we should try out a relationship. And that's what happens in a perfect world. So but with that being said, uh, these friends that she's had that haven't met her husband, if something happened to her and her husband, those are still going to be her friends. And they have been friends for so long through thick and thin because the thick and the thin was, and you know, during the relationship. And now that they've broken up, uh, now she's single. Who says that those friends that never met her husband won't be more than that if her and her husband get a divorce? So you're saying that if they met her husband, they wouldn't be more than that after, if they were to get a divorce? Most likely, no, because most people know if I met your boyfriend, then it's kind of like me and you dating after I thought I actually met your boyfriend. Now, that's kind of awkward. That you is. You think a man cares about yes, that? Yes, yes. Could a sport, man. Yes, you think we a do. person, a man? We do. You think a yes. person would care about yes. that? Yes. That goes back to your, original, your statement no, from oh, earlier. We're telling you. I don't you. agree. I don't think that most woman will back up if they have found out that a man was married and vice versa. Girl, no, I've been a man. I ain't saying a woman would. I'm talking about a man. I, but she's saying a, that if once you find out that you have a, a girlfriend, that she'll be like, oh, well, never mind. You got a girlfriend. I'm not going to uh, approach you in that that's what you. That's what you said when you were talking about right. the workplace. And, exactly. and he you said, said that most men wouldn't back up while most women would. Right. Completely disagree. I think they all well, go I mean, for it. You've never been a man, so I'm sure that you Yeah, you but you I also know women who don't take that as anything. Really? What's their name? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. seven, like eight, you say, I'm, I'm trying to get to year one. Why you talking? My brother, my brother. Hey, to, well, I'm just. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I was a little occupied earlier. Did you answer the? Uh, I know you said you didn't have a backup plan. Do you know if your your Do you know if your wife if she has a backup plan? Well, well, well. According to my wife, she does not have a backup plan. What about what about Armando? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> dun yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just in case you all are wondering, he walked out the building. Yes. I did not walk out the building. <laughs> the, the, the back end, you know, Armando is it's apparently fine, also Armando. pit bull, so uh, that, that may be a backup plan, but that's also uh, a, 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 that's also going to take some reach as well mm. <laughs> to make happen. We'll, we'll say that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. But, but according to her, she does not have uh, dun, 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 dun. a backup plan. So, 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 do you think a woman would admit that she has a backup plan? No. No. Well, I, I'll say this. I, I, I asked. My that, wife would admit. Oh yeah, that Catherine her. would. <laughs> you right about that. That that that, that, that woman there will tell you what it is, when it is, how it is. I respect and that. I, you know, her. but I respect the game. If she admitted, it, I wouldn't even have no problem with it. At least you know. that that hey. mm-hmm. That's my thing. If you gonna keep it real, like that man, I, I like your wife though, man. Your wife hey, is she, cool, hey, man. She, she would admit it. I admit it too. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> But she ain't admitted it, so I ain't admitted nothing. <laughs> my brother, my brother. Hey, we, we just on a talk show. 
<laughs> having a conversation. That's what the second caller said, though. She said that she would make it clear to her other significant other that, you know, I can, I have so-and-so behind me just in case it doesn't work out, just so you know, so they can appreciate her a right. little bit more. And, 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 and that, that doesn't is, work. I don't know if I agree with that. I, 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 would, I think that's a you, bad idea. You can't tell yeah, a man no, that. You uh, can't tell so a you, So you, I'm going to appreciate you more because you had old old boy right next to him. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call you bluff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. And people like to feel in the relationship right. that yeah. they're and, and, and Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call you bluff. To piggyback on your question, though, um, I did ask. Because so. when you see me out first, <laughs> <laughs> when you out with your curls, but see, that's what, I'm out with my girl, That's oh, what oh, women King. do. You know? King, to, to, pick, to answer your question, I did ask several women, <laughs> and most of them did say that, you know, they thought it would, they thought it true that most women do. Or yes, I, have I, heard, a the same, plan, I heard the same thing. Uh, have a backup plan. Even the ones that didn't admit it. You know, I, I take I, I take the fact that the you won't answer the question. The look on the face. Uh, the, the fact that you won't answer the question lets me know. <laughs> it's one of those. How you, <laughs> that how you, you more know about that? How you know about that? Plan. So, so I, I think you know, there's obviously some truth in this, and I don't. I find it interesting. Even Jamba here is pretty much telling me that uh, well, in the yeah. relationships that she's had, you already know she's she's got a, <laughs> you can she's look got it a up. backup plan. Wait, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, you said. Can it. we run the tape back? I yeah. don't remember. We got it. It's on YouTube. I, I know. We got it. <laughs> Again, subscribe on YouTube. As we said. Yeah. Real Family Talk on YouTube. It'll be up later. This is right there. As <laughs> soon as you get a man, hey, bro, let me let you hear something. <laughs> Watch yourself. You better be cooking, cleaning. Because <laughs> she will find somebody else to replace you. She does have somebody else to replace you. Somebody that watched with Cascade, not Dawn. <laughs> her, her homeboy listening right now like, hold on. I thought we was closer than that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bro, if you listening right now, bro, you better get on POF. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. Uh, I mean, just to kind of you know, we're get, we're getting to the uh, to the end of the show a little bit here. I guess the kind of consensus that I've heard, I've heard two things. I've heard the ladies tell me that the idea of a backup plan is actually the the study must be at least close to being true uh, from just the conversations we've heard from women tonight. Um, there's some women that called in as well that kind of felt like I felt, especially like I said, when it comes to, you know, you're in a relationship, there's no fiance, there's no marriage attached to it. I can get having those plan B's in those situations because you really never know what's going to happen. Even if you've been together two years, you know, if y'all don't have a real commitment to each other via, you know, fiance or marriage, quote unquote, um, you know, I think anything can happen. So, you know, you kind of have that guy that, you know, maybe is in the background that's let you know, but once you get married, you know, if you're gonna be all into your marriage, I just I just found it hard to believe that you'd have in the back of your mind some dude that you're like, Well, if this thing don't work out, I, I know where I can go. Because like, to me, I have a theory. When you have that, then you you know, what do you really have in your marriage that you can have a guy in the back of your mind that you feel that way about? I have a theory. I think when you about like years one through between five and seven, you no, know, everybody's all in. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, I mean, really, like, well, after the college said three years, after about, you start getting to year four, and you start figuring out, like, is this person really going to be like, <laughs> like this? You, you know, know when, when reality starts setting in right. with everything, you know, if you get family start covering the picture, with kids and all this stuff, and you sitting back looking, like, not, not saying that you have a plan, plan B, but I believe people would not be honest if they would not be saying, especially, and I especially saying women, and I'm not saying as, just to be sexist, but as a woman, especially if you have kids, in the back of your mind, you cannot, I would not believe you tell me you would not, if that marriage broke up, think about if this marriage broke up and I want to get married again, what man would be out there that would be willing to take me and my kids in? I think as a woman, you almost kind of should be thinking like that mm-hmm. to, to a certain extent because it's like, no. be, because. No. I disagree. Be, because, what, no, what I'm saying is, you know, you, you have to, not saying like as a backup, but like if something happened, like is there a guy out there that I know that maybe I've tracked to and maybe might, nah. what might no. marry me? Women need a man to take them no, in. No, 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 no. I'm not jobs. saying take me oh, wow. in. I'm not, I don't mean like take care oh. of me. I mean like that will still love me in spite of me having two kids, you know, because a lot of men have a problem with that. The men who have Four kids themselves. Hey, I'm, I'm not I saying they circumstance. What, what are we talking about? Hey, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm not. I, I don't have I don't any. Think I've met these I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying <laughs> saying the man's circumstance, but we all know a lot of men say they don't want a woman with kids. I sure say. It. And some of them, and some of them have three, four kids. I have zero. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, I would think some in the back of your mind, you would have to kind of be thinking that, like, okay, if something happened, if if I wanted to get a relationship again, if I wanted to get married again, even if it wasn't necessarily, oh, it's him. 
maybe just in, even in the back of my thinking, like, is there a guy out there? Where would I meet this guy that would be willing to be in a relationship with me and, and my know, kids? I think that women have that mindset because they mainly think that all men are dogs and that he probably already doing it. He probably already got some woman on the side. He probably going out with his homeboys, but he really going to see that other chick. So just in case I don't want my heart broken, let me have something to back myself up. And I think that's the main reason that it happens. Now, as far as the man paying for stuff and stuff, that, that as the article is actually saying, I disagree with that. But, hey, you know, men do that. They will just pay for you and whatever just for whatever benefits and whatever, you know, whatever they're getting. I don't know. But, you know, I really feel that a lot of women have a backup man or another man that they can fall back on because they don't trust the man that they're with 100%. Then they need to get rid of that man. I'm going to have to disagree with that because going back to my original statement, I think most women or the women that were polled in this article – I think that they just have these people who are friends that they like and that if something were to ever happen, they know that, you know, if I were to get with this person, we'll be pretty good. Not that I'm looking at them in a way as being my backup plan just in case or when that day comes where I catch him cheating or just in case we don't work out. But if I were to not, if something were to happen and we weren't able to work out, then yeah. You know, and I want to ask the married lady who was married for three years. I wanted to ask her, does she have any ugly male friends? Because <laughs> she's saying the ones that haven't met her husband. I really want to know, what well, are any of them ugly? I bet they all attractive to her in her eyes. I bet, well, you know, he's cute, you know, but I bet ain't none of them like, you know. Yeah. What if they are? I, I bet they ain't none of them ugly. Good <laughs> good all, right. all right, man, we're we, we going to wrap See, this women up. women don't like good personalities when they get 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they 40 years old, they still, they still sing it. They still sing it like, you know what? He really does make me laugh. <laughs> 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 All right, man, we're going we're gonna to end this conversation right there, man. We're going to talk about the couple, Steelers? The, I, I was just going to acknowledge yeah, the Steelers, go brother. Tampa Bay. I already know. Yeah, I wanna, I've been I acknowledging when they win, so Ooh. I'm going to acknowledge in the loss, too, sir. You have a lot of loss acknowledgements. Yes, the, uh, <laughs> the Steelers lost this past Sunday, if you're paying attention at all, to football. Mm. Lost to Tampa Bay at mm. They yeah. were 0-3 when they went into the game, left the game 1-3. Mm. Couldn't mm-hmm. believe it myself. But, you know, I, was, I watched uh, some of that game, and I knew from the opening kickoff, when, when the, the Steelers got the opening kickoff, they ran their first play, and on the first play, uh, Michael Johnson made a play and uh, sacked Ben Roethlisberger and caused a fumble, and Tampa Bay picked it up. So when I saw that happen at the beginning of the game, I said, this is not going to be good. If Michael Johnson ain't made a play all year. Mm. <laughs> I want to give a shout-out. But he made a play on the first game of the steal. I was like, this ain't going to be good. And, and you know, <laughs> we, we were right there into the end, and they lost it in the end. But yeah, at the end of the day, it was the L. No. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be better next week. Nobody cares about the Steelers. I really want to give a shout-out to them Cowboy fans, uh, Pastor Mac, and all the other Cowboy fans out there. Boy, the Cowboys played like the Steelers used to play on Monday night. If you remember how the Steelers used to play, that's how them Cowboys played on Monday night. Shout-out to ECC and all the Cowboy fans. No, we're not shouting out no Cowboy fans. <laughs> we don't like the Cowboys. I hate it. I, I got to give it to them when they got it. When they're doing good, because they, they played a great only, game on Monday, man. The only reason why I care about the Cowboys this year is I got DeMarco Murray on my fantasy team, and he's doing Man, forget lovely. the Cowboys. Everybody, <laughs> well, I would say this. I mean, you, you play the percentages. They can't be sorry forever. Now. Come but on. did you see the game? Well, did you if you saw the game? You I, saw, know. I, saw, I saw part of it. You saw part of it. You didn't see the whole I didn't have to game. See the whole, and we, I see the score. I know how the game went. Yeah, they, and, but they was playing the Saints, though, man. They wasn't playing no ring dink team like the Saints. Tampa Bay all Buccaneers. Rinky D. The Saints' defense is horrible. The, the Saints wow. is the ring D. I don't need, honestly, I mean, yeah, they put, wow. they, they throw, roll all up and down the field because they throw the ball 800 times a game. No, they, you, of course, wow. you go throw for 500 yards if you throw the ball 100 times. I disagree completely. I wish the Cowboy fans had, had time to call in and talk about y'all Steelers. And I think you are a, a Dolphins fan, right? No, I'm a Raiders fan. Raiders I'm happy fan. they fired their coach. <laughs> so we'll see what happened with Tony Sperano. There's rumors. No, I, I'm not even hyped there's, about that. They need to bring Hugh Jackson back. There's rumors they're going to come that's back. That's the last time they were good. They, Gruden ain't rumors coming back. Rumors that they might bring Gruden back. But we'll see, man. He, he chilling. Bring somebody back. <laughs> bring <laughs> Bo Jackson back. We that's th- what I'm talking about. <laughs> Put him that running back. He, he can't do worse. We want to thank y'all for listening tonight. Uh, We want to thank Frank for uh, coming and joining us. And we'll see Frank again next week. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll be right here again next week, 9 p.m. Real Family Talk. This is WOKB 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. My brother, my brother.
You can follow us on Facebook, Real Family Talk. You can follow us on Twitter, Real Family Talk, the website, realfamilytalk.weebly.com. WOKB, Winter Garden, Orlando. It's Gospel 1680 WOKB. I'm the one, the only, Brother Chris Shaw, blessing you on this beautiful, beautiful, marvelous day that the Lord has made. We're getting it in right here. I want you to enjoy yourself. Don't touch that dial. Keep it locked on the greatest gospel station in the land. We are WOKB.